Oh hey there, I'm back reviewing cats. This one is Lemon. You can probably hear her purring. She's our exotic short hair. She is five years old now. And this video is going to go into the beginning all through our um, time with Lemon in our house and uh, explain to you sort of what you're in for, uh, what they're like in terms of maintenance and personality and all that sort of thing. And uh, it should be interesting if you are interested in having one of these very, very lovely little cats. So the exotic short hair is like a Persian type cat, but um, they are shorter haired. So there you go, exotic short hair. Um, the idea, I guess, is that there'll be a little bit lower maintenance, but that's not, you know, um, it might be slightly truer in terms of brushing the coat and whatnot, but really, uh, still a little bit of maintenance to go, but I'll get to that. Uh, we got lemon from a breeder. Yes. I know it is lovely if you can find your cats at a shelter, for sure. Um, I know that that is a really nice thing to do, but we wanted this type of cat, so we went to a breeder. And we were really happy with her, and she's been excellent ever since. But anyway, yes, there is you do you, and we will do us, and I guess that's where we'll leave that. So yes, Lemon, we got her. It cost about $850 for one of these, um, and she came in a little cat carrier. She came in the special cat part of the airport, or the... You know, pet pickup part of the airport where you get pets and um, she was uh, a very very fluffy little round kitten particularly cute if this face <laughs> appeals to you she was very very cute um, so yeah she's more or less just grown and looked exactly the same ever since she's just kind of a bigger version of that now <laughs> so there you go but yes um, 850 bucks plus the extra 150 or so for the cat carrier and the shipping. So I'm sure if you could pick her up, it would have been a little bit less than that. So as a kitten, she was instantly thrown into having two very small children who were very, very interested in it. And she handled that with, you know, great patience and ability. She was very, very um, enthusiastic really with the kids, which is really, really nice um, and quite, you know, pleasing because you never know how cats are going to go with little kids they tend to like to carry them around like this and all that sort of stuff but lemon's done great with them and they love her and she seems to like us a fair bit she is no basil though and i'll get to that in a second but yes as a kitten she had all sorts of adventures with the kids getting put places and all that sort of thing and she just took it all in her stride and um she um yeah was very very malleable and very very easy going it was really interesting she lost her super easygoing nature when we got Basil, who they seem to really get along. He's like a platonic life mate, I'd guess you would say, because they're both dissexed. She came dissexed, um, so did Basil, because they're from breeders, and I guess breeders don't want everyone else breeding their cats. <laughs> um, and yeah, so she's um, uh, changed when Basil's come into the household. She's all of a sudden become much more sort of cat-like, I guess you would say. Much more... Um, I mean, she's being very friendly now, but much more indifferent to us, which was really, really interesting to see. Um, she's sort of got a, um, a tendency to kind of just, you know, fob us off, do all that sort of cool cat stuff, and um, more or less <laughs> ignore us from, you know, from time to time. She's a um, very, very active cat. These are quite, um, the, if you're after something that's going to keep mice away, or just hunt like crazy, then... These guys are really, really good. She's um, really, really playful kittenish. She'll chase around the ribbons. She'll um, she'll chase the laser pointer. I mean, I don't particularly love laser pointers for cats, but she'll chase the laser pointers. All that good stuff. You get a much more uh, sort of. If you're wanting to play with a cat, you get much more fun uh, out of this one, especially than Basil, who's just a little bit too lazy or chillaxed for that sort of thing. But yeah, so very, very active cats. Um, inside only is Lemon, and I think most. I think it's, it's sensible if you do get a sort of fancier cat just to keep them inside because it saves you lots of trips to the vets. It saves from running into other cats with all the other sort of um, diseases and whatnot. Um, you know, we keep her shots and all that sort of stuff going. But yeah, apart from that, she's um, inside only because we just don't want to risk it. Don't want to risk her getting hit by a car or all that crazy stuff that can happen. So um, for an inside only cat, we keep her busy with what well, we got her basil to entertain her. The kids keep her very busy tying ribbons to strings, running around the house and all that sort of stuff. Lots of um, entertainment for lemon. For lemon. So yeah, uh, look, in terms of the health of an uh, exotic short hair, we have noticed that they do need a brush fairly often. So I'll probably brush her 
really quite thoroughly once a week, and that's with a Ferminator brush. So that's a um, you know quite a, quite a, an invasive brush. Really, it really does get amongst the hairs for sure. So um, I'll ferminate her, and I'll also um, the tear stains. Gonna have to get some tear stain away, and this is something that if you don't think you're gonna be happy with doing this, then don't get one of these cats because any flat-faced cat is going to have goop build up under eyes. You see, she's got here, she's got some there right now. She didn't like that. She's got some there even right now. It's pretty much a daily thing, and it is affected by what she eats and how much sort of of the crude or drier foods she has. We get her the meat-only stuff, so. Um, the dry food that has no cereals in it and that seems to get the best results in terms of her A tear stains and B what comes out the other end of her as well so that is um, yeah, something I would recommend but yes you're going to have to be wiping this cat's face and nose all around its, you know just getting a, rag, getting a wet rag covered in the tear stain away stuff and just getting in there and getting amongst it and if you can't you know if that's not your idea of something you're happy to do then just be aware that this is going to be a necessity. So there you go. But yeah, in terms of fur, she does shed a bit. You'll pick her up, you'll end up with fur all over your shirt and whatnot um, if you don't keep her brushed. Sort of even probably, I could brush her more often and that would probably be about what I'm supposed to do. If you don't brush them, they, apart from shedding, they get sort of quite decent sized mats on them and they sort of seem to bunch up about three or four millimeters away from the, the skin. And you can usually just pull them out in little tufts, but. Uh, they just don't feel very nice for her. She's pretty good with maintaining herself though. She doesn't, um, apart from the little nooks and crannies on her face, which she obviously can't get, um, she's yeah, pretty pretty on top of things with her personal grooming and cleanliness and whatnot. But yes, so real kittenish even still, uh, can really easily get it a rise to like goofy sort of um, chasey behavior and that sort of stuff. Um, much more active than Basil. She currently weighs four kilograms. She's very quick, quite robust and muscular. Um, very, very sort of um, physically able. She can jump a lot higher than Basil, which, you know, apart from just the weight, I think it's just her breed as well. They're quite sort of hunter and athletic type cats and very sort of, um, very interested in what's going on around the house. She's always, you'll always find her skulking around. You bring any box in, put anything down, she'll be sitting on it straight away. She'll be, um, right into any sort of um right into any sort of um, boxes or um nooks and crannies that you know you you put something new get a new bit of furniture and you the kids will get a new toy she'll thoroughly inspect it she does spend a day sitting at the windowsill kind of just staring outside it's always quite cute when you get home and you can see lemons just like gazing out the window at you i kind of feel bad for her sometimes because i'm sure she would love to just come outside and eat birds all day but um Obviously, that's not the best, but it may be what she wants, but it's not what she's getting. So, yeah, she is one interesting little cat to have around. And with regards to a companion cat for a cat like Basil, she's really, really good. Uh, it was just really interesting seeing the change to uh, of a much more sort of feline and sort of attitude uh, fueled cat with the uh, introduction of the new one, which is really interesting. Another really interesting thing was, although Basil was from the same breeder, in fact, when he arrived, she got like a weird sort of stomach bug, which is just, I guess, uh, all part of it. She had this reaction to him. She's never been sick ever since then, but that was just something that it was a bit strange that I thought I'd mention um, that uh, it cleared itself up. I think a tri trip to the vet and some, you know, whatever they did, just I think just a drip or something just to get her fluids back up. but. That's about it. Pretty low maintenance in terms of actual costs. Like she's not at the vets every other day for her sinuses and stuff, but just be aware that any cat with a flat face, those, fa those faces aren't supposed to be flat. Like that's not, that's the thing that us arrogant humans have bred into them. And it's not a, not a design, you know, not, a, not, a, not a natural design is what I'm trying to get out. So a bit like bulldogs or pugs, anything like that, issues are likely going to happen. So just be aware that that is you know, the case as well. But really happy with Lemon. Um, as I say, like, I don't know, it's weird to break it down to this, but yeah, there's some outlay to cats. If you paid less for yours, then great job. But um, otherwise, even at 850 bucks, the you know, lifespan of about 15 years or so, um, that's a lot of joy that you're all gonna get. Herself, us, it's, um, it's something that you'd, you know, you'd pay, it's a cup of coffee every week or so, and it's, it's paid for. And you've got this really cool little, um, companion to cruise around your house with 
it's not going to be too much of a pain. Certainly nowhere near having like, we've got the two dogs, nothing like the level of crazy that they bring. Just a little bit of interest for yourself and a bit of, um, you know, uh, quality of life for her, I guess. I mean, it's nice, nice bringing an animal into your house and treating it well. And I think that's what we do with, with lemon. Uh, with regard to what she eats, she largely eats the grain-free dry food. It's like the, you, you pay a little bit more for it, but it is better for them in both ends, really. And um, she, then she gets, you know, fresh cuts of meat and stuff when, when we're preparing meat and chicken and whatever. So uh, she seems to do okay. Basil was really not interested in any food apart from his dry food, which we've always found quite funny because he's so fat. But he doesn't, you'd think he'd be wanting to eat everything. Not interested at all. Lemon, you have a, you'll be having your wheat mix in the morning and she'll be up waiting for you to get up and hoping there's some milk left in your bowl. She's much more proactive with her foods. At any rate, that's about all I can think to cover with lemon this time. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video. Maybe a Siberian Husky review is in our future. See you later guys. Goodbye.